and every one of you this morning, noting that by the weather, I'm guessing there may be some golfers, there may be some lake folks, there may be some travelers. Let's pray that wherever they are, they have good YouTube reception. <laughs> As we gather together this morning, we have a variety of announcements. Adam is going to begin with his, then Carolyn with hers. Good morning, and um, can, the pamphlets are back there. Could somebody grab one and bring it up? I forgot to get one. They're laying on the table back there. And while I'm kind of gabbing here, Phil, oh, he is coming up, good. Um, anyway, I'm giving the report from uh, the church council meeting that we had um, on Thursday. Uh, lots of reports of things that the council has been doing. So um, some things, some highlights. One, our transition of our financial records uh, into QuickBooks from PowerBook, uh, Power Church, thank you, is about finished. So thanks to Ben and Mike for all their hard work that they've been doing. So as a result, and we saw it on Thursday night, the council, uh, received a treasurer's report in my mind that is the most accurate and less confusing than we've seen in a long time uh, because of um, power church is just kind of cumbersome but anyway the exciting part is um, starting in next month's herald you will see a brief little report of well what did we take in what did we spend and how does that compare to our budget so that you can kind of see where we are financially and the good news is, at least in my mind, I like that, is that uh, our March re, uh, report was we were in the positive. So we like that, we like that. Uh, the Spiritual Life Committee's been really busy. One, uh, they're working on a welcome bag for visitors to our church. Um, and all the items are being collected and very soon as we see new visitors, uh, we will be sharing some items to help them re uh, remember St. John's, and uh, we're real excited about that. And also a big project they've been working on is looking at our membership. And um, so they are sending out a letter that's going out real soon um, to uh, people who have not been attending in a long time and saying, hey, we miss you, and also, please come back, or if you're not interested in attending, let us know. So um, that's a, a big job. Property Care uh, has contracted with a new lawn service and is also uh, looking at updating who has keys and codes so we can have a handle on that. And a good report was there was an inspection of the kitchen and it passed, so yay raw. Now, the other thing is, and Obviously, I don't think the message maybe got to the ushers, and I apologize for that. There's a brochure in the back, or maybe you picked it up. I see some green. That's good. Uh, we have a little brochure of our goals for St. John's, and this is the result of our retreat that we had, the visionary retreat in January, as well as lots of discuss discussions within the council. So when you open it up, you'll see... Our goals for years one, three, and five that we hope to accomplish. On the very back, it says we want you, just like the military ad you see, the Uncle Sam, we do want you. So if you are interested in working on any of these goals with us, uh, with the council and other interested people, please fill that out. Put it in the uh, uh, offering plate or drop it in the office either way 
so that we can have your name. And we'll let you know when uh, schedules and meetings are um, uh, being uh, scheduled. I'm saying it twice here. But uh, it's exciting. And I will have to say that we've already started working on goal one, meeting the needs of our family church. And one way you can participate, and it's pretty easy, it means you don't have to call anybody, you don't have to attend any meeting, and that is the prayer ministry. And there's a sign-up sheet in the back so that all we need are your prayers. So we're already starting on goal one, so make sure that you do that. In addition, we have a member who needs assistance in moving locally. And if you are available on June the 1st, please let Adam Miner know. So he's pulling that together. So I mentioned Phil Harris. He's going to tell us about the Indy 500 shop. Thank you. Uh, briefly, I'd like to let you know what has happened out at the track since last year, which we had a really great year last year. But they've made some changes out of the track. And after uh, moving a lot of groups around, um, and one of the changes that they made was they needed uh, a very large number of people to work in the tent that we had last year, uh, probably more than we could supply. So they uh, actually took that tent away from us and after all the reshuffling they offered us race day next year instead of all the days that we've normally been out there we are only going to be out there on race day good thing is i only need 12 people this year instead of all the numbers that we've had before so i've got a sign up sheet in the back so if you would consider may 26th um, there is a, a waiver that needs to be signed, so if you could uh, give me your name and information and sign the waiver, uh, I think we'll be okay. We're going to have three booths instead of one. They'll be smaller. They'll be manned by four people in each one. But um, I know we've uh, done a good job out of the track in the past, and I think they, uh, they appreciate our work. It just it didn't work out this year where we had the, the larger tent like we did last year. So if you would, consider signing up for race day. I appreciate it. Thank you. The final announcement before we pass the peace is that last week I mentioned to you our desire to be of help to the family whose one-year-old was shot and uh, he was moved from Peyton Manning to Riley this week. I have been engaged in conversation every day with them this week. He is making progress. We talked at the council meeting, and we are encouraging, desiring, and inviting you to give through, one, any of the loose cash that goes into the offering plate, or if you would like to give, writing on your benevolence line, put just T-C. And that will go to the fund that we are using in working with another organization so that upon the release of their child, uh, they can go and get into an apartment. We are praying because they have a four-year-old, a three-year-old, a two-year-old, a one-year-old, and one to arrive in June. And we have met and are committed to doing everything we can. Uh, the, the parents' names... Uh, I'll, I'll say this time, and we'll leave the last name, it doesn't matter. The parents are the father Tavion and the mother Gracie. And we will be seeing them here frequently in church once their little one is out of the hospital. And that is one of the reasons that we need that nursery staff. This is an opportunity which I invite you to be fully a part of in every way that you can to connect with this family. That being said, those are the announcements. Let's sh stand and greet one another with peace this morning.
asked Jesus, what then are you doing as a sign so that we may see and believe you? What work are you performing? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread out of heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Then the people said to Jesus, Lord, always give us this bread. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me will not be hungry, and the one who believes in me will never be thirsty. May we this morning receive this teaching on the bread of life as shared in the Gospel of John and use it to draw us closer to God as we begin this service of worship. Amen and amen. As you are seated, will the children please come forward?
resurrected Christ and enable that faith to work in and through us today that in this service of worship we might be drawn closer to you that in this service of worship we might rejoice and celebrate through song through prayer through the reading of your word and God speak to us through the message this morning that we can find the ways in which it applies to our individual lives as well as to the corporate life of the church gathered here this morning. We pray these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, as all in the house together said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the Old Testament reading. All right. When all these things have happened to you, the blessings and the curses that I have set before you, if you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord our God has driven you, and return to the Lord your God, 
and you and your children obey him with all your heart and with all your soul, just as I am commanding you today. Then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have compassion on you, gathering you again from all the peoples among whom the Lord your God has scattered you. Even if you are exiled to the ends of the world, from there the Lord your God will gather you, and from there he will bring you back. The Lord your God will bring you into the land that your ancestors possessed, and you will possess it. He will make you more prosperous and numerous than your ancestors. Moreover, the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants, so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, in order that you may live. The Lord your God will put all these curses on your enemies and on the adversaries who took advantage of you. Then you shall again obey the Lord, observing all his commandments that I am commanding you today. We have before us a musical rendering of Psalm 100. You are invited to respond as indicated. <laughs> Sing joyfully to the Lord. 
on Israel. Wars. Even the rumors of wars are something we need to pray against. Instead, as a church, we are called to pray for peace. That peace which is to pass all understanding. So this is what I believe. I believe that we have wars between nations because we have turmoil in our individual lands. We can't in the countries of this world seem to focus on that which is right and good and true and pure, which is not to harm others, but to help others. Not to increase our possessions and our lands for our sake, but to give of what we have for the needs of others. So this is the challenge in prayer. That as we pray for wars to end, that we pray for conflict and turmoil in our nation to end. And that we pray for those families, those homes. And I would surmise that each of us knows at least one home where there is turmoil. And we can pray for peace there. And then, a big problem. Turmoil in churches and between churches. What we need to pray is that God would make sure that in working through us, this would not be be a church where turmoil gets the upper hand. Will you pray at least one of those things silently after we sing our prayer chorus? For that peace which passes all understanding in our homes, we pray. For that peace which passes all understanding in our church, we pray. For that peace which passes all understanding in our nation, we pray. For that peace which passes all understanding 
in our world, we pray. And as we pray for peace on earth, God, enable that peace to begin in all of us. Cleanse us individually from bitterness, from anger, from seeking ourselves first. And let peace begin with us. We pray the prayer that your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Folks, it was getting a little too warm in that row. Excuse me for stepping out to take it off. Will you pray with me? 
And now, Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, both now and forevermore, world without end. Amen. Have you ever been at that place in your life where a circumstance has confronted you and you've said, God, show me that you're there. God, I really need this help. Show me that you are real in my life by God just getting me through this situation. If you've ever been there, say an amen. Amen. I remember when our son Noah was born. He was born three months early at two pounds, three ounces. Our prayers over and over. God, please intervene. Let Noah grow. Show us you are here for us. Show us. After three months, Noah came home from the NICU, and Noah now does weightlifting competitions. He's a big kid. We, as human beings, get caught in life's experiences just like the life's experience talked about in our scriptures so far this morning about God's people crying out in hunger and God show us you're, you are real and that you are here and God just showered down manna, bread from heaven. But God's people are God's people. God got us through our situation with Noah. But that doesn't mean that challenging situations came to an immediate end. How many of you are sometimes oblivious to what is going on in your body physically? Men, raise your hands. Ladies, how many of you have a husband or husbands, how many of you have a spouse that has a hard time breaking down and going to the doctor, say amen. That wasn't very loud. I think there are some of you. I know that back in the summer of 2017, I kept blaming the problem that I was having with seeing on my glasses must be out of balance. So every morning I'd look in the mirror and I, I'd try to to make sure that they were all right, that, that it seemed okay. And then as time went on, I got used to just this feeling that that right eye, just there was something that had to be the lens. And then one day, as I was driving to Marion, Indiana, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I realized something. I couldn't see out of the eye. And it wasn't because of my glasses. I got as quickly as I could. Even that afternoon, they got me in right before 5 o'clock because I knew who to call. And they tested and they said, your retina has been completely detached. If we are to save any vision, we have to do surgery right away. And of course, I was like, God, be there. Fully restore my vision. Because God, I know you don't want anything to go wrong with my ability to read, my ability to drive, my ability to be a pastor, because you have laid this upon my life. God, show me that you are here for me. God was there for me by surrounding me with loving people who walked through the surgery and who comforted and reassured me upon realizing that that vision wasn't coming back. Does that mean God wasn't there? No. God was there through the circumstances of the people that he put in my life when it could have been so much Worse, like what if as I was driving, 
and I realized I couldn't see out of that eye? What if all of a sudden, in blinking my eyes, I, I couldn't see anything, and I'd have veered off the road and plowed into a tree and never made it past that moment? Sometimes we miss the times when God is really there. And so God sent Jesus Christ. And still, people needed proof. We got to see it. We got to know. We've got to believe that God is real. Forget everything God has done before in our lives. We need to see it now. And in the early church, there was a great struggle fomenting between the people who believed in God and that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, and the people who believed that Jesus Christ was a phony. And in that conflict, there arose great turmoil, and one of those who brought turmoil was a man named Saul. Saul's belief was that God had shown him that Jesus Christ was a phony. Acts chapter 9, beginning at verse 1, begins to then explain to us a little bit about this man named Saul who was challenging those people who believed in Jesus that it wasn't the believers that needed to see proof. It was Saul. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. First thing, Saul, who does anyone know who he was renamed to be? Saul became Paul. Paul, the apostle who wrote 13 New Testament letters and preached throughout the known land. Paul was a murderer. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. Paul was a persecutor. Do we this day really therefore have a concept of what it means to have been like those early church people who based on our belief, shown through the proof of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, do we know what it's like to be persecuted? Not just mock like the media does today, amen? Not just mocked by people who think, oh, they're wasting their time. Their God doesn't do anything. Mocked. Maybe we can handle some of that. But when was the last time any of us was confronted by someone who would kill us for our faith? Think on that as the story from the scripture evolves for us this morning. As he was approaching Damascus on his mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Okay, that had to be an eye opener. You're walking and all of a sudden you hear, I mean, come on, let's, let's, Let's face it, if, if somebody today said, I heard the voice of God calling me from heaven, we would be calling them out as somebody who needed to be in a mental health institution right away. Would we not, in our doubting? Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? That is God saying that when God's people are harmed. God is being harmed. Think of that. When we do an act against another person 
who is harmed by what we do. When we demean them, when we are mean to them, when we persecute another person, we are persecuting God. When I get in a tirade around my house because things didn't go the way I wanted to and I decide to take that out on the two people in my house who are the closest to me, I'm not taking that out on them. I have to recalibrate my thoughts. I'm doing that to God. Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, okay, now I got to tell you, when we were praying for my son Noah, if I heard a voice say, I am Jesus, I'd have flipped out. If on the way to Marion that day, when I realized I had lost my vision, and Jesus just in an audible voice said, I got your back, Dan. You think I'd be able to stay on the road that easily? That would flip me out. Why? Have we lost the belief that God, through Jesus Christ, speaks to us, tells us the good, the bad, and the ugly in our lives? I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting, and I'd put in parentheses, the one you are persecuting because you are hurting other people. Now get up! If Jesus said get up, and I thought I heard him say get up, man, I'd get up fast, amen? Get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. I get it. Scared. Confused. Why me? What's going on? What is the purpose? I firmly believe. Can scripture, I believe, can support it if we go through it from front to back. That everything that happens in our lives, the good or the bad and the in-between, happens for a reason. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there for three days, and he did not eat or drink. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. So here's a regular guy who just happens to be a believer. Let's say that in this case, that regular guy is Phil. And Phil hears the voice of God say, hey, Phil, I got a job for you to do. Now, initially, if you audibly again hear that voice, Phil, would you be a little bit shaken? Maybe. But does that mean God couldn't do it? No. God's done it before. God can do it now. God can do it tomorrow. God spoke to Ananias who was steeped in his faith. The Lord said, go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas, not the bad guy Judas, who betrayed Jesus. He was long gone. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. Things had begun to happen. 
God has Saul's attention. God needs our attention. And in getting our attention, the hope is that God will force us to our knees if that is the case required to pray. All of the turmoil that this church has been through in the years past has a reason. What is the reason for us to realize? First thing we got to do is pray. When's the last time we prayed for this church every single day? When's the last time we prayed for this church morning, noon, and nighttime every single day? There was chaos in Saul's life. He needed to talk to God. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I've heard many people talk the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. And he is authorized by the leading priests to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. But the Lord said, so here it is. God is sending Saul, or sending Ananias to Saul. Saul is a really bad kind of guy. God is saying, Go to the bad guy. Go to where it's tough. Go face the challenge. Go into the midst of persecution and turmoil where your very life could be at risk. Go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? Everyone that is not Jewish. We are the Gentiles. And to kings, as well as to the people of Israel, the Jewish people gathered there. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's God was saying that when the persecutor would come to know that he was a persecutor and God would touch his life, he would be one who would be persecuted. That is tough. And maybe sometimes we don't go and do the tough stuff is that we don't want to do what can come as a result of it. We don't want to go through it. But Saul went and was touched by Ananias, who took a risk and went into danger because Ananias heard God say, go. Just like at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, the words of Jesus, go into all the world. Go everywhere. So Ananias went and found Saul He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. Afterwards he ate some food and regained his strength. Saul was on the journey of going 
from persecutor to being one who would be persecuted. And along that journey, we will discover the things that gave Saul the strength, the courage to do the hard things. And my challenge to you all is that you begin a journey with me, with your church council, and with each other to walk and look at what Paul, Saul become Paul, what he went through and how he persevered so that even when it was hard, he realized God was with him and he did those hard things. Church, are you willing to see anew where God will take us? And do you have the faith with me that just like God provided manna from heaven, just like God provided Jesus to be the bread of life for us, God will be in the midst, both leading and pushing us on the best journey he will ever have for this church. all in the house together said, Amen. Now as we begin our entry into the sacrament of Holy Communion, remember that in this congregation, you do not have to be a member of this church to take communion. You do not have to be a member of any church. All you need is to desire to receive Christ again and again. Through forgiveness. So will you join with me. In our response to the word of God. Through the Apostles Creed. I believe in God. The Father Almighty. Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ. God's only son our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord has prepared his table as a place for all who love him and trust in him alone for their salvation. As you have just professed your faith, you are now invited to partake with gladness of this holy supper. On the night before he died for us, our Savior took the bread. And when he had given thanks to you, O God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this for the remembrance of me. We remember Christ's death. We proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await 
Christ coming in glory. Will the ushers please come forward, reminding you that we still have some of these pandemic-era communion pieces, where on the one side you take and pull off the top, as I instruct, and you eat the small wafer, and then as I instruct, you turn it over and pull off the top and drink, as I instruct. this table, all are fed, and still there are gifts overflowing into the world God loves. On this spring morning, we come together to thank God and to offer our gifts so that the ministry of this church will continue to grow and be a blessing to the world. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise as the ushers come to wait upon us.
you join with me in the prayer of dedication. God, break into our lives as you did to Saul and call us to be your workers. God, break in again and use the gifts we bring to build your realm. God, break in again and change our world once more. Amen and amen. For our departing hymn, we will sing only verse 1. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the throne, to the one, the only, the almighty and all-wise God, creator of the ends of the earth, be praise, glory, and honor, both now and forevermore. As all in the house together said, Amen. Amen. Oh, okay. 